Hello, my name is Dr. Mary O'Kane. I'm a lecturer in psychology and education, and I'd like to say thank you to Kilkenny County County Library Service for inviting me to make this little video for you today. Um, it's part of the Healthy Ireland at Your Library programme, and the video is all about helping to raise resilient children. Okay, I suppose I'll start by saying I think 2020 has showed us just how important resilience is for our children. Um, it's been a very challenging year and that is what resilience is all about. It's about the ability to rise to a challenge. When we talk about resilience, people often talk about resilience is the ability to bounce back from difficulties. And I'm not sure that's really fair. I think it's more about picking yourself up and, and plodding on and coping and facing with challenges and just keeping on going through them. Something that we would want all our children to have. Um, as I said, at the moment, we realise just how important it is to be able to cope with the challenges we face. Um, so how are we going to support our children in becoming more resilient? Well, probably that's the first thing to say is that you can become more resilient. So it's not something that's set in stone. It's something that we as parents can very much influence. So today I'm going to talk about three things that we can do um, to help support our children in, in becoming stronger in the face of challenge. So the first one is, I suppose, about our relationship with our child and um, our connection. Our connection with our child is absolutely everything. And it's not that we want to take over for them when they face challenges or it's more that we want them to know that we are in their corner. All the research from resilience talks about the need for one good adult. And I, I suppose being that good adult and letting them know that we are there for them is, is a very important part. So I'll come back to that one at the end. But the two other aspects that I want to talk about today, the first one is allowing our children to act independently and having the, the confidence in them to allow them to cope with situations. And then the second one I want to talk about is encouraging them to be good problem solvers, teaching them how to be good problem solvers and good decision makers. So when they're faced with challenges, they start to understand they can work out what to do. So they're the three areas. But before I start on them, I would like to tell you about a little girl um, who for me absolutely embodies the whole idea of resilience. And this little girl, you may have seen her on television. Um, she, her name was Tasia and she was in the Channel 4 programme, The Secret Life of Four Year Olds. Um, if you haven't seen the programme, don't worry, it's like um, hidden cameras in a preschool. So this little girl, Tasia, um, goes in on her first day to this preschool not knowing any other children in it. And she just struggles to make connections. She struggles to make friendships. And um, as a parent, it was really difficult to watch this little four-year-old struggling to make friends. No apparent reason, just I think the other children may have formed connections already. But you see her trying to reach out, uh, trying to engage with the other children and get knocked back. Um, and you see this little girl's confidence go down. You can see the impact that this is having on her. So day two of the programme, you see little one coming in again, in to base, trying to make new friendships again. But Tasia has regrouped. Tasia comes back in the following day and no doubt, having had conversations with her parents the night before, she's thought out a plan of action. Tasia didn't go home on that first day, even though we saw her confidence dip. She didn't go home and think, you know, I'm not worthy and um, no one wants to be my friend. That means that I'm not likeable. That means I'm not a good friend. No, she went home and saw this as a problem that needed to be solved. And how was she going to solve it? So she came back in the following day, armed with ideas for play, which at four, is a great friendship tool to be able to come up with the good games and the good ideas. 
So in she went the following day, armed with these ideas. And she went around the children, spotted this little boy, and you could almost see her deciding, you are gonna be my friend. And sure enough, he was. She came up with these ideas, and before he knew what had happened to him, there he was playing away with her. At the very end of the programme, the producers were speaking to the children and they were interviewing Tasia with this little fella sitting beside her. And out of the blue, the little fella turns around to her and he goes, I like you. And she kind of looks at him and she looks back at the camera and just goes, I know. And it was lovely. It was lovely to see this little girl that had had her confidence beaten down come back, face that challenge and not only survive, but thrive. So, what can we learn from Tasia? Okay, so remember I said the first of my three points was about um, our relationship with our child. Well, it was very clear watching the programme and Tasia's parents speaking. They had this bond with her. They, Tasia knew when she went home that day, they were there for her. They were there as a sounding board. They were there as a support. They were her cheerleaders in the background, ready to cheer her on, but not to take over. So we'll talk about how we might do that at the end, but my second point is allowing your child to be independent, to encouraging them, to, to encourage them to show independence as much as they can. Now, Tavia's parents were there as a sounding board. She knew she could trust them to talk about the whole situation with them, to work it out. However, they didn't take over. They could have said, well, we go in there tomorrow, we'll have a word with that teacher and we will tell her what happened. This is not okay. They could have said, um, I'm going to ring up now and, and tell that teacher, those children need to play with my child. They could have taken over, but they didn't. They showed faith in Tasia. They showed faith in her ability to go back in there at four years old the following day and deal with the situation. I'm sure it's quite possible that they would have been tempted to go, oh, I'm not, I'm not sending her back into that. Why would I send her back into that situation? But what would she have learned? She would have learned that they didn't believe she was strong enough and capable enough of dealing with that situation. As parents, it's, and I completely get it, it's our natural instinct is to protect our children when they feel they are faced with challenges, when they're faced with difficult situations. We have this absolute instinct to jump in there and to protect, to, to take over, to support them. But we need to really consider the difference between taking over and supporting them. If we want our children to become resilient, it's so important that sometimes we step, step back and we ask ourselves, can they deal with this with our support as compared to do we need to take over? Because very often that's what they need. They need to know that we are there for them, that we support them, that we'll help them work out a plan of action, but that we believe they're strong and they're capable and they can do it. So, Tasia's parents saw that opportunity for her to be independent. So what about the next point, the problem solving? Tasia went in the following day armed with a solution. So how do we as parents help our child to do that? So if we can imagine that we are Tasia's parent. So she comes home and she is really upset we can we can see that she's been knocked oh you you know you know that feeling when you just you see the little face and you know that their confidence has been knocked so what do we do we sit with them we spend time with them and let them know that we are there for them we are there as a support if they need it for this situation so in this instance what could we help tasia do well this problem, she just hasn't been able to connect and um, she hasn't been able to build friendships. So we would sit with her and say, okay, yeah, you know, I can see that this is a problem. You know, this must have been so hard for you today. I'm, I can see by your face that you're, you're struggling. You know, tell me about it. Talk it through and then help her to come up with solutions. So you might say to her, 
Okay, yeah, that sounded so tough. Well done you for coping with that, for, for dealing with that difficult situation. I'm so proud of you. Let's see if I can help you think about how you might make this better tomorrow. You sit, ask her to come up with ideas. Now, if particularly if your child is used to you solving problems for them, she, Tasia might go and, um, well, you ring the teacher and you tell her that they have to be my friend. So we don't dismiss her idea. So every idea that they brainstorm, and that's what we're encouraging them to do. We're encouraging them to come up with as many ideas as they can. They might be a little bit crazy. Doesn't matter. Their ideas, their possible solutions. So we would say to her, okay, that's one possible solution. Let's think of more. She might say, well, you, you phone them up and you tell them those children have to be my friend. Okay, it's another possible solution. Let's think if we can come up with more. If they can't come up with any more solutions, we give them support. So we might say, well, what do we do when we're trying to make friends? You know, how do we do that? Let's think about that. You know, do we go over and introduce ourselves? You know, maybe tomorrow, if she saw children playing, she might go, hey guys, what game are you playing? She might look for a child on their own who hadn't connected. And um, she might say to a child playing, oh, can you, can you explain to me how that works? You would come up, reflect on possible solutions for her to deal with her problem. We're not solving it for the child, we're helping them to reflect. So they have lots of solutions. Where do we go from there? Now we have to start whittling them down and to come up with the solution that she thinks is best. So again, we don't tell them what we might think, okay, this is what I would do, but you want to allow your child to choose. So we help her reflect and let her come up with what she sees as the best solution. Even if we think that's not the one I would go for, you don't go, oh, no, 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 I wouldn't do that. No, you encourage her to reflect. If the solution is one that you really feel, no, like, for example, that I ring the teacher and tell her, you might have to go, you know what? I don't feel that is what's right for me to do. I don't think that's the right one. And um, let's see if one of the solutions you could take on board might work better and encourage them to reflect on them. If, if they choose a solution that you think, you know what, it's not what I might do, don't jump in and rescue them. Tempting as it is, again, think back to what I said about independence, about allowing them to go out there and experience life. Sometimes we have to allow them to fail in really low stakes events so that when they reach a high stakes situation, they have learned how best to problem solve. They've learned the consequences of their actions at that point. So if her solution was to go in the following day and go up to a group of boys and girls and say, what are you playing guys? And you might think, mm, I'm not sure that's one. No, if she wants to make that decision and allow her to go in there and try what she thinks is best, what happens if she fails? So say it doesn't work, the solution she comes up with doesn't work and she comes back, what do we do then? We, well, first of all, we allow them to feel the pain, always empathy first. We allow them to feel the pain of the fact that it hasn't worked. But then after that, we sit with them and think, now, if you had to do it again, what might you do? Or why do you think that didn't work? Let's think about that one. So we're really supporting them to be independent problem solvers. As parents, we, we can't give our children resilience. It's not something that we can just say, there you go, do this and you will become resilient. Part of it is looking at ourselves and making sure that we are stepping back, that we are encouraging that independence, that in any situation that we think, you know what, with a bit of support, they can do this, that instead of taking over, because we think we can do it faster, we can do it better, instead of doing that, that we step back, we allow them to, to trust in their own independence. We show them that we have confidence in them as independent young beings. 
but we also support them with their problem solving. If we encourage them anytime they're faced with issues, if we sit with them and support them in their problem solving skills, we are teaching them how to respond as they grow older. It will become a learned behavior. They, when they're faced with more challenging situations and we're not there, they will have learned uh, this is how I pro so problem solve. You know, I am a capable problem solver. I will sit and think about what my solutions are and pick the solution I think is best. In terms of their resilience, equipping them with problem solving skills is absolutely huge. So back to the first thing I was talking about, and that was being that one good adult. So we're encouraging them to be independent. We're encouraging them to problem solve. Doing both those things is part of our role as being that adult, that supportive adult in their life. But there is something else as well that can make a huge difference to that relationship, to that bond. And it is taking the time every day to have a small amount of quality time with each of our children. There is no better way to let them know that we are that cheerleader, that we are that um, coach behind them, supporting them and um, willing them on, uh, wishing them success, then giving them our time. And there's a, there's a little story and it's taken from a book from a man called Stephen Covey. And the book is called um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and he tells it, this little story in the book, which I tell very often because I find it a great reminder of setting our priorities. And for parents, I think it's a good reminder every so often to hear this story. So Stephen Covey tells this story of a professor of philosophy who comes into his class one morning. And he sets a big glass jar down on his desk in front of, of the students. And he says, oh, my jar here is empty. I'm going to fill up this jar. And he takes rocks and he fills the jar to the top of rocks. Asks the students, is the jar full now? And they go, oh yes. And he goes, no, no, no. And he takes smaller pebbles and they trickle in between the rocks. Same thing, is the jar full? No, no, no. He gets a bag of sand and he pours it into the jar so the sand fills up all the spaces. And Stephen Covey asks us to consider the rocks, the pebbles and the sand in terms of our life's priorities. If we do the same in ter terms of our parenting priorities, if we say those rocks are the most important thing in our lives, the rocks are usually people. They are our children, maybe our partner, could be your mom, could be, be your best friend, but they are usually people. The pebbles are things that are less important. So they might be extended family, extended friends, could be your job, your football team, but they're usually less important than the bigger rocks. And the sand is the, the dross that we spend so much of our time doing every day. Stephen Covey talks about emails and phone calls, but if we think about it, it's often, it's just, it's life. It could be those little work things. It could be the ironing, the washing, you know, all those things that we do in terms of our, our the household. But they're things that are not really important. His argument is that we need to really think carefully about the order in which we fill our jar. And as parents, Sometimes we get up every day and we start filling our jar with the sand. So those household jobs, the, the answering emails, the you're scrolling through Facebook or Twitter or whatever, but they're the, the things in our lives that don't really matter. Instead, if we try and make sure that we make time every day for those rocks, it can be life changing in terms of our priorities. So what I would say to you in order to be that parent who is that one good adult, in order to be that parent who knows our child well enough to be able to know when they're capable of it being more independent, who know our relationship well enough to know when we can step back, in order to be the parent who knows how I can really support my child in problem solving, 
it steps back to making time to connect with them. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of time every day. It can be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it can be different for each child. For some children, it can be the bedtime story. For some children, it can be sitting in the car when they don't have to look at you when you're side by side. At the moment, it can be getting out for a walk, walking side by side with one of our children. It doesn't matter when the time in is, it's just a small amount of time when we turn off our phone and we absolutely concentrate on that child. For little ones, play. It, when they're sitting playing, just to sit with them, not to take over, but to just join in their play. It can be absolutely life-changing. All the research and resilience talks about having one good adult in your life. And that little bit of time can make a big shift in our children knowing that we are that one good adult. So they are my three tips in terms of raising resilient children to focus on that little bit of time for a relationship, to focus on allowing them to be independent and to focus on supporting them to be good problem solvers. So thank you once again to Kilkenny County Council Libraries. Thank you to the Healthy Ireland programme for giving me the time to have this chat. If you'd like uh, more information on Raising Resilient Children, I post an awful lot on my Facebook page. It's Dr. Mary O'Kane Early Years. If you'd like to have a look there, I'm posting information all the time. But thank you once again for inviting me to come along and talk. I really do hope that you found the information useful. Thank you.